can get it going. All right, it says that we are live. So hopefully, I don't see us yet though. And y'all know, don't get started till I see us. Especially since yesterday. Y'all, I talked for 10 minutes yesterday and the mic wasn't on. What? <laughs> Wasn't on. Oh, I was like, wow. I can't hear you. I looked at the time. I've been talking for 10 minutes. I was like, what? I had to <laughs> like twice. So I am over technology this week, y'all. I really am. Um, <laughs> so I don't know if Mercury is in microwave. I don't fucking know. But uh, yeah. <laughs> welcome to Unlock Your First Six Figures Morning Show. Our banner is missing because technology is not working with us today. But that's okay. We are here. Uh, so welcome to the show. I'm your host, Shay Cannon. I'm an award-winning, award is still right there, uh, chief operating officer uh, to an exclusive clientele of six and seven figure business owners, uh, CEOs, if you will. However, I have a mission and my mission is to help small business owners just like you, entrepreneurs just like you, struggling to make it to your first six in business. Um, I wanna show you how to make the money and create time for you. Make the money and create time freedom. My freedom, it looks like living and working my business from all over the world. Um, to encapsulate it, I am now here in Mexico, okay? Now, this week, um, we've already started with our blog talk, so we have already released the topic of the day. And the blog, if you want the blog and what we talked about all week and the full list of words, you want to eyeball it, um, go to shaycannon.com forward slash words, okay? shaycannon.com uh, forward slash words, all right? Now, let's do a recap, right? Because this week we're talking about marketing words, marketing words. Now, why are we talking about marketing words? It's because of chat GPT. Now, I'm not saying don't use it. In fact, I'm saying, please do use it. Just use it correctly. Uh, and, you know, correctly is a whole nother training. Uh, however, let me tell you, ChatGPT tends to give us all the same words. Uh, I thought I was cool coming up with unlock your first six figures. And then ChatGPT started giving all of y'all unlock, unleash all the things. And so what I found to be valuable would be if you had something to go to, to replace some of the words when ChatGPT gives you words, you know it's giving everybody else, right? Mm -hmm. So I created four categories of marketing words. On Monday, we talked about scarcity words, okay? And those are the words you use to show a sense of urgency. Go back to Monday's replay. Not only is the list in the blog, and not only did I say it on Monday, but you also get the benefit of how we talked about those words. That is the value of this morning show, okay? We answered questions about the words. The ladies gave information about the words. Again, I'm never the only genius in the room. I am a genius. I'm just never the only genius in the room, okay? So Monday, Scarcity words. Tuesday, we talked about money and value words, okay? And you use those when you want to express the value of an offer, the value of something that costs, okay? That whole list, we ran it down. It's also in the blog. However, the morning show recap on um, replay on Tuesday gives you way more, okay? Wednesday, vanity words yesterday is what we talked about. Vanity words are a little different from money and value words in that you're not really talking about money, but you're talking about intangible types of value. We ran down the whole list. Again, the conversation is golden, so go to the replay. Today, what we're talking about are trust words, trust words. Now, we use these words when we want to um, show credibility or build trust, okay? Let me run it down for you. Get ready, because I want you to listen to pull in at least one or two words that you want to start using uh, that are resonate with you and your audience to start using it to show credibility and to build trust. Here we go. According to accredited, anonymous, approved, authentic, authoritative, authority, backed, because, best, best selling, bona fide, Cancel anytime, it shouldn't be in there. Case study, certified, dependable, don't worry. Okay, well, I see where cancel anytime is now, y'all. Um, it's, it's the trust. Uh, endorsed, insured, expert, fully refundable, genuine, guaranteed, improved, ironclad, lifetime, money back, no obligation, no questions asked no risk, no strings attached, official, privacy, professional, protected, proven, 
recession proof, recognized, refund, reliable, researched, results, safety, scientifically proven, secure, studies show, tested, track record, try before you buy, unconditional, verified, well-respected, and worldwide, okay? So those are some, to me, that's two different categories. I think in the future, I will separate those, okay? Because some of them truly are about showing credibility and some of them are about showing trust with the purchase, okay? So that's why some of those words were in there, showing trust with the purchase. I don't think when I was putting them all together uh, as trust, uh, now I'm thinking I should have separated some of them so that you can kind of get it better. However, now I just want one from each category. One from what shows credibility and one from what, what creates trust with the purchase from each one of you that you want to uh, utilize. So I'm gonna start this thing off with Heather. Heather, what's at least one word that shows credibility and one word that shows trust and purchase that you will start using? And you're on mute, just a talking. I knew that. <laughs> I totally knew that. Mm -hmm. um, I think I would probably go with um, <laughs> best selling, best selling okay. for me because I have edited four bestsellers and counting. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be credibility. And then for trust, I think that I would um, maybe do track record or well-respected maybe both okay hmm. I, yeah because like there are strings i don't think that's used a lot track record you mean yeah i like that because yeah, I don't, it speaks because, to your experience in a different way mm -hmm. yeah and i want to say it like i've i've edited you know two best-selling books that's a track record right so yep so that's what i would use Love it, love it, love it. All right, next we're gonna go to Z. Z, I saw, I saw you taking your notes. So give me at least one word to be, uh, to show credibility and one word to show trust in purchasing. Oh, wow, Shay. I think as a new game creator, um, I would say for me, the authenticity of my game um, and how it's played because it is played uh, different. It's a combination of different parts, but I will go with authenticity. Um, and then I also wrote for, I wanted to also feel like I can say guaranteed to have fun because of the interaction and all that. Um, for the selling part, maybe offer a refund if they don't like it. Not at all. Uh, you say what? I said not at all. Try not at all. all. Yeah, because how do you return a card game? You say, oh, it's a no. physical product. Once they open it, it now costs you money. It's not like. Okay, okay. So Thank you for telling me that. Okay, that's a no for me then. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I am confident in force the authenticity and the guarantee of fun because uh, it's based on some premises of historical things that we've done over time that has lasted. Historical is a great word. Look at Z. Historical up is a good word. word. That what was the word I said? Historical. historical. Write that down. Historical. historical. Okay. <laughs> That's a Thank good you trust word. Credibility word. Yes. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. Z over there adding to it. Didn't even know. Look at you. Look at you. <laughs> right, growing. Z. I'm growing under your tutelage. <laughs> you are growing, period. All right. Kimberly Miles is driving. Do you want to participate, Shake? Yes or no? You don't have to because uh, we put safety and driving first. Okay, great. <laughs> Kimberly's going to pay attention to the driving um, and just listen in. Um, Demetra, are you available to tell us out of the list, what is at least one um, showing credibility word and one uh, trust in purchasing word that you're going to start using? Um, so I didn't hear all the words, but um, mm -hmm. for one category, it, was, it would be studies show because I'm always showing them the the data of the readability levels or nationwide you know what's the reading levels and and yeah. stuff now for credibility if you could read me some other words I can tell you something uh actually you gave me credibility the okay, other one, one was one. uh create trust in purchasing and that was oh. stuff like let me see cancel any time nope 
Um, let me see. Fully refundable, no guarantee, lifetime, money back, no obligation, no risk. Uh, let me see. Da -da 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 -da. Recession proof, reliable. Sign, let me see. Da -da -da. I Try do like reliable not. and proven. No, but I, I like reliable. Mm -hmm. There you go. Love it. Okay. Love it. All right, let's get into our additional information, right? Because y'all know I got some ready for y'all. So in the category of showing credibility and building trust in purchasing, um, why do we use these trust words in marketing, right? So we're, of course, the, let's go ahead and get the obvious out of the way. We're establishing credibility, right? We're showing that we have an expertise. Uh, we're showing that... Um, what we're doing or what we offer has credibility as well as we have credibility, okay? Uh, we're building trust because when people are purchasing, sometimes they are wondering, are you like wish? Like, is it gonna be like, this is what I thought I was buying and this is what I got type of thing. And so we use these trust words in purchasing to help people to understand that we're taking the risk out of the purchase, okay? We're taking the risk out of the purchase. Um, and so, Number three, overcome skepticism. Um, but what I'd like to say in, in our entrepreneur world is we're already overcoming objections, right? Think about the objections someone would have. Well, is she really an expert? Is she really, well, let me show you this credibility, right? Uh, am I gonna lose my money? Am I gonna get my money's worth? Well, let me show you this trust in purchasing. Get it? Um, we're encouraging action and we're enhancing customer loyalty because let me tell you like this, it's nothing like, buying something and being afraid to refer it to somebody else, right? You guys are referring people to this group. Why? Because the credibility has been shown, right? And the, and the trust in purchasing, which is free, but you're purchasing with your time, right? Mm -hmm. But all of that has been shown. And so now you guys are willing to say, hey, my people come in here. This is what I've been doing. I think you would benefit from it, right? This is what we want to do with our paid stuff too. We want to overcome the objection of, is it going to do what we say it's going to do? And especially with services, are we who we say we are, right? So that is the purpose of these things. So that's the why. Let's talk about when we're going to use these words, right? Because I give you a list of words, and I know some people stop right there, but not here. We give you all the things, right? So when do you use trust words? Use them in testimonials. Use them in reviews, okay? Use them in your guarantees and your warranties. Warranties, of course, are more of a product-based thing. Guarantees, uh, service-based. Um, certifications and accreditations, right? Especially if you're the one giving them. Like, what is the credibility and the risk uh, associated with what you're giving as an, as an accreditation, right? Or maybe you're showing an accreditation and a certification to show your expertise and to show your credibility, okay? Um, use them for security and privacy. Some of us uh, work with clients on a very data-driven level, right? I work with CEOs. I'm their COO. I frequently have to use their credit cards for stuff. I frequently have to um, store sensitive documents. I have to give them a sense of security and trust with that, right? So think about that. Transparency um, and pricing and policies. That's that trust in purchasing, okay? That's that trust in purchasing. Most of the time, people feel like you're the one, but they've been burned before, right? So one of the things I have in my course is that in the first three days, you can get a full refund, no questions asked, okay? It's a high ticket offer. So in the first three days, you can get a refund. No questions asked. Now, that seems like I'm being generous, but really the, F <laughs> the Federal Trade Commission requires that you give people a full refund within the first three days, okay? Everybody doesn't know that though. So when I say you get a full refund within the first three days, they're like, oh, okay. Like I can pay my money and get it back, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, another thing you can do is I, I have a policy to where if in the first 30 days, okay, if in the first 30 days that you don't get value from the course, we can give a, re it's not going to be a full refund, but we can give a partial refund, right? But I have stipulations, like did you log into the modules? Did you show up to the meetings? Because if you didn't do the things to get a transformation, I'm not giving you your money back because that's you, right? 
Now, if you did all the things and you feel like that's not going to work for you or it's not what you feel like you need, let's talk partial refund, right? So you can do things like that to help people to mitigate the risk of buying your service or your product, okay? So transparency and pricing and policies, don't have that stuff hidden, have it right up front, okay? All right, let's talk about how to use these trust words, these words of credibility and trust in purchasing. So some techni techniques in using them is use trust icons and seals, right? When you're saying guaranteed, don't just say the word guarantee. Use the guarantee shield. People are used to seeing that gold shield that says guaranteed, right? Mm -hmm. Even with Heather, Heather says she wants to use best selling. Guess what? That comes with a gold seal, right? People are used to seeing the best selling shield. So use these icons and seals that are associated with the trust factors that you're using, okay? Mm -hmm. um, case studies. If you're talking about case studies and research, Demetra says she uses it a lot. Heather uses it a lot. Z should use it because hers, uh, you know, she, she's in the health part of it. Link it to some of these studies, yeah. right? Link it so they can see for themselves. What were you going to say, Heather? I was going to say, especially for Z, because she does have evidence that her game is enjoyable. Not only did her family play it, but she's attended vendor fairs where mm -hmm. kids and families play it in front of her. She has the evidence. She does. Now, I'm going to say even for Kimberly Miles, um, both of your, your product and your service, right? There's research search associated with both your foot product and your customer service service, right? Your trainings. So use these case studies, use the research, use all the things. Um, authority language, okay? Experts recommend, industry approved, that type of stuff. We definitely need to be using more of that because it's not just about us, it's also about the methodologies that we're putting together, right? So I'm known for a framework. And what I do, let me give y'all an example of what I do. If you come and you have a discovery call with me and I uh, recommend that we have a strategy session, in my follow-up email, I not only give you the recap of what you're gonna get in your strategy session, I give you the link to pay for your strategy session, and I give you research that shows what strategy sessions mean to your business, right? I give them the research because all of my stuff is high ticket. So I don't want you spending your money without knowing that, hey, this research out there that says that what I do works, mm -hmm. right? I do the same thing with my fractional chief operating officer services, right? After the follow-up call, if I'm willing to take you on as a client, because again, I have an exclusive clientele. If we're a fit and I have capacity, then I'm sending you the, the recap of what all I'm going to do for you, right? I'm sending you the payment link, and then I'm sending you research that shows, number one, what a fractional chief operating officer is, because some of y'all don't even know, right? And that's fine. I know that even though I explained in the call, you need something else to lean back on. And then I give you the research of how fractional chief op operating officers change small businesses for the better, Right? So you can do that. No matter what your service is, there's something out there that shows that people who partake of such services benefit. You can share that. Help people get off the fence and make a decision about you, okay? Um, so authority language and authority data and statistics, right? So we talked about research, but we kind of talked about case studies. Now we're talking about the data and statistics, which is kind of more of what I was talking about. I know that's what Demetra uses, but all of you can use data and statistics, but it depends on who your client is, right? Know who your client avatar is. Some client avatars don't want to look at numbers and statistics and data. They don't want to, right? Or if you share it with them, you need to share a bare bones version and then explain it concisely, okay? Know your ideal client. Um, authority and transparency. Authority and transparency. So that can also look like open lines of communication, mm -hmm. open lines of communication. Some of you want to have high ticket services and products, but you don't know how to hire, how to uh, service a high ticket client. They have expectations, baby. Like, are you ready for high ticket expectations, right? They need communication protocols. They need a way to get to you in, a, in an instant, a way to send you long form stuff with files, right? A way to organize their tasks and, and to know the progress of things. Communication, you have to be transparent. It can't be, I paid you your money. I paid you my money and then I hear from you in three months. Now you could very well be working, but you have to communicate, right? So transparency um, and, a, and a 
authenticity is what it said. I said uh, <laughs> authority, but authenticity, right? So I, when I think authenticity, I think of human experiences, right? How are you human? Are you, what, what can make a mistake, either on your part or your client's part? Some of you give these timelines, but you're not honest with the client in telling them how they affect the timeline. And then they blame you when you said it's only going to take three months, but it took them a whole month to get you everything you needed to get started. Well, baby, it's three months from then, right? So you need to be using language that shows people where they really are with your service, with your product, with whatever, right? Even with products, right? If there are different kinds, I, I need you to tell me what kind person, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I love you, but I need you to tell me what kind so we can get started. So be authentic and be transparent about how they affect the results that they want to. Uh, social proof. You all know I love me some social proof. Uh, I don't know if y'all remember uh, Malika Holloway, uh, but she's in PR and she was the first person to I ever heard say social proof. Um, and now I can't go back. I can't go back, y'all. I get it's social hard proof to go back, proof. isn't it? I get social proof of everything. <laughs> um, I recently spoke at a summit and the comments were so awesome. I got, I, I screenshotted all of that, right? Social proof. So now on my speaking page, when I speak about how I am entertaining, but educational, how I'm interactive, now I have that social proof that that is exactly what I am when I speak, right? Okay, cool. Uh, customer support, customer support. How are you guys going to support the people either before the process, through the process, after the process, okay? So those are some ways you can use this um, these words because of that, um, what is it? We're calling trust in purchasing. Well, I, am I going to be supported with your service or with your product, right? Or is it like when those kiosks first started popping up in the mall, we were like, I'm not buying them from the little hood in the mall. I don't even know if you're going to be here tomorrow. Like we didn't know how that thing worked, right? <laughs> we're like, uh-uh, uh-uh. Um, it's why some people don't like buying from flea markets and stuff. They have to get into a totally different mindset to um, buy from a flea market because what if something go wrong? Like there's no guarantee from you. You might not be here. You might not be in the same stall. I might can't find you. All the things, right? So show the people about what kind of customer support that you're going to have for them so that we can ease those, uh, those thoughts of mistrust in purchasing, all right? So now that I've given you this additional information, uh, how are you going to use these words? Now we picked the words that you felt like you were gonna use, but now that I've given you additional information, what I would like to know is, what are some places you're gonna <coughs> use words that you didn't think of before? And since Z is off the mic coughing, Z, you can go first. So I gotta pass, I gotta cough. I'm sorry. Well, get some water and get off the mic. <laughs> we'll, start, we'll start with Heather. Heather, how are you, um, what areas of your business are you going to use these words now? So I use I, I use the term best selling, right? When I'm like doing a presentation or something like that, but it it does not appear anywhere on my website. I don't use it when I'm po like posting any type of material on any of my social channels or any communications with my email list. I never use that term. Mm -hmm. And so I really, now when you say that, I'm like, <laughs> you're like, duh. like the, right. Duh. <laughs> like the big duh light bulb goes off above my head. Right. So I really have to do that. Right. I really have to incorporate that in everyday communications. And I haven't done Don't that. Use the icon. Don't forget to yeah. use the visual version of bestseller. Right. Yeah. The, the little ribbon metal thing. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So just like I say, I'm an award-winning fractional chief operating officer. You should be saying I'm an editor of best-selling authors, editor for best-selling authors, editor yeah. of best books. I know we need to figure out like a more concise way to say that, but yes, yeah. I'm a I'm a best I'm a best-selling editor. That doesn't make sense. No, that's why I said editor of best yeah best selling I've or best-selling best authors, editor of Bestseller. Books, bestselling authors just figure out how which way you want yeah. to okay yeah so you got to get it in there you got to get in there i do um, kimberly okay. is driving so we're gonna leave kimberly alone demetria how are you gonna start using these words you caught me on the way out the door i know i'm really dark <laughs> right now <laughs> um, well, Ashley Shay, I have been trying to incorporate it in the marketing materials 
for the workshop I'm hosting on the 13th, which is right around the corner. Um, the other day I posted one, I can't remember which power word I use. About 10 minutes later, somebody had ordered a ticket. I don't know, it had something to do with the wording or algorithms or whatever, but I'm using them right now for anything that I can possibly use it for. <laughs> Awesome. I love it. And, and it does have something to do with, because basically all we're doing um, is psychology to it, right? That's why they're called marketing words. There's, it's psychology to it, but it's not conniving or manipulating. What it is, is highlighting, right? It's highlighting. So if you wear a dress that shows that you have a nice figure, you're highlighting. And I don't mean it got to be tight. I'm just saying whatever figure you got, you're wearing something that accentuates your assets, right? Okay, guess what? You got those assets. So all we're doing is showing them. We're highlighting them, right? Um, when you go and you buy a picture and you put it in a frame, the picture is not telling a lie just because you framed it to highlight it. It's just you're calling attention to the picture. So that's all we're doing. We're calling attention to the fact that we are experts and we have credibility. Our offer and our product has credibility. Buying from us um, is a trustworthy thing to do, right? And so all we're doing is highlighting what is there. Now, when it goes into manipulation and con artistry is when you're lying, right? Because a lot of us, I don't know about you, but I am not a salesperson. I am not a salesperson. When I think salesperson, I think car salesman that is conniving and you know, you're gonna get home and the car gonna fall apart, right? That's what I think about when I think sales. I've had to overcome that and understand that for me, I'm not actually selling you something. I'm giving you an opportunity to partake of a service that is going to push your business forward, right? Because I know that's what I do. So these are things that we want to do. We want to highlight what is trustworthy about us, not create trust where there should not be trust, okay? You shouldn't be lying to do things. Figure out what is true about you, about your service, about your product, and we're going to highlight those truths so that people will buy OK, so you don't have to be a salesperson because all you're doing is giving an opportunity for people to extinguish and ease the pain, because that's what your product or service should do. It should extinguish or ease a pain. What are their pain points and how do you solve those pain points? That's what we're pushing for. Right. Auntie Shaky, I know that you came in kind of late. Uh, you didn't hear the list of words, but you kind of heard how to use them, um, the techniques you kind of um, have by context, know what we're talking about. What did you like to add? Well, I was just going to say, like, um, what I've been using um, on, like, my landing page and stuff like that has been award-winning um, mm -hmm. because I have, you know, won some awards in my space. Um, I've also used as seen on. So, um, you know, like, Wall Street Journal, da 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 da. You know, a list of credible sources. You know, um, so yeah. So that's where I've kind of used some of those in that space, and I think I can probably beef it up a little bit more. But, um, but yeah, I love it. I love it because I also now it's usually when I'm using um, presentations, but yeah, also on my on my sales pages and stuff featured by. Uh, as seen on, yeah, I love that. I love that. Thank you, Auntie Shaker. See, I told you, mm -hmm. the only genius in the room. I love it. I love it. So, um, this is the reason why I love this community. It's the reason why I'm gathering this community to get bigger. Um, because what's better than more geniuses in the room, right? Um, so I want to remind you guys that um, on Monday I will have your training scheduled for August. Uh, because just like I thought I was not going to, with all these projects that I'm heading up and these things for my clients, I knew I wasn't going to have the headspace to have it by today. Um, I was just going to try, but I'm, I made a promise, right? So that's a trust word, right? I made a promise that by Monday you will have it um, because I do have some things in mind. I kind of do know what the first trainings will be um, because there are six phases to six figures and we should start in the first phase. Um, one of the reasons why a lot of businesses don't make it to their first six figures is because they're skipping these foundational phases. Um, and so we're going to go in order and I'm just going to I'm just going to figure out what little mini trainings we're going to have. Right. 
um, because for the people who pay for my course, I can't just give you the course for free. It's a high ticket course, but we can start talking and having these conversations that are around these six phases and the pain points around those six phases. Okay. So that's kind of how we're going to do it. Um, I'm going to figure out when I'm going to have the webinar again, because that um, how to overcome the biggest, the six biggest obstacles to making your first six figures. It was a great webinar. Um, there's a bonus training that comes after that webinar. So I'm probably going to repeat that for you guys. Uh, what does my shirt say? It, my name, of course, Shay Cannon. <laughs> I told y'all you need to be wearing your own shirts. Uh, but yes. Um, so we're going to do all of the things, right? And this, that is what's going to make it feel like a mastermind. But I am going to be transparent. That's one of our words for today, right? And let you know, you're not going to get all the things that these people are paying for in the course, right? But I am going to give you things that's going to make you help you to think differently, okay? To help you to start doing things a little differently. But if you want the full transformation, yeah, you're going to have to get in the course, have a strategy session, um, the full paid strategy session. But guess what? If you want to start with a free strategy session, hey, DM me or go to shaycannon.info forward slash free strategy, okay? Because we can get started with at least answering one of your questions. What do you think is blocking you right now for making your, your first six figures? Let's talk about it. Um, but yes, uh, your girl does give opportunities for your full transformation because I don't fail. Um, and that is in my course in level one, you learn the framework. In level two, I help you through the framework to actually get to your first six figures, but you have to graduate with the framework first. So that is what we're doing. It has been a great week. Does anybody have any questions about marketing words, how to use them, the categories that we talked about, anything? We got five minutes. Ask me anything. Ask me anything. Hey, Shay, I have something. So uh, <clears throat> I mentioned uh, the authentic and guarantee. And so I noticed that even when I did my vending and had people play the game, I didn't capture information like how to keep in contact with them to follow up when I'm going to introduce my new game that's being developed. But also, I was thinking about um, people that I know that could be a resource. And when you mentioned about having the social proof, is it does this reasonable to uh, introduce it to them and get their take on it? Like I have a friend. Um, I know that's a, um, what she's a psychologist or something with education and she played the game and she liked it. Um, she thought it would be good for the school for um, early something to have her write something down and I can use that on my page. I'm also thinking about getting um, some teachers that I know to uh, ask them to give me some advice on their opinion. So I'm looking at how to expand beyond just you know, my regular demographic, but really get some professionals to give me some, um, I don't know, what's the word I want to say? Some feedback. Some, models, some approval, some, some endorsements. Way, some endorsements. And so that way I will have people with that um, background that say, oh yes, this is, you know, really, it's unique, it's authentic, it can help, whatever, whatever. What do you think? I love it. Um, okay. so I think that you definitely should. Um, so let me tell you about social proof, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell you the hierarchy of what is most um, influential down to what is least influ influential, even though it is influential, right? Okay. Most influential is always going to be video. Okay. okay. A video of them with the product, talking about the product, or at least just talking about the product, mentioning the product by name, mentioning you by name, you know what I'm saying? Not some old general something that looked like you could have got it from anywhere, right? Mm -hmm. We want to be specific to you and the product. So okay. video. Next most influential is audio, okay? Because if we can at least get the words that they said, you mm -hmm. can put a picture up and use those podcast uh, audiograms where it shows the picture and they're talking and you see the wave going across the picture. So audio is going to be second. Okay. Third is going to be a picture with words. Okay. Now, most influential is going to be a picture of them with your product or a picture of them with you. You see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So not just a picture of them, but a picture of them with the product and a picture of, of them with you. Okay. Next is going to be just a picture of them with the words of the testimonial. Last is going to be just the words that's the testimonial. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now. The exception to just words will be if you have on your sales page or your website where they can come and do uh, reviews, mm -hmm. you can snapshot the review from your reviews 
And that's words only usually. And that works better than just words by themselves. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Because we value reviews. Amazon has taught us to look at these reviews, right? TripAdvisor has taught us, look at the reviews. And so if you have a review system and you can just screenshot it and they can go back to your website and find that that's an authentic review, that holds way more weight. Okay. Right? So that's the hierarchy of getting your social proof. Okay, thank you. Of course, of course. Uh, Heather said, what a great week. I'm going to open the writing room. So we'll be over there in a moment. Heather, writing room starts at nine. Did anybody else have any questions before we get out of here for the week? I'm looking so forward to next week. This was a great week. It really was. Nope. All right. Well, good morning, Cheryl. We know you joined us a little late, but the blog is there with all of the words. Today, we talked about um, trust words. Um, so shaycannon.com forward slash words is where all of the marketing words live. Um, this replay will be a great one to catch, guys, if you have missed um, it live. And guess what? If you're watching the replay, let me know. Put hashtag replay in the comments. I would love to interact with you. Um, the interaction doesn't stop just because the live stopped. So put it in the comments so we can um, interact with you. But all right, ladies, I want you to have a great day and have a great weekend. And as you know, over the weekend, I'll come up with something else that I feel like is transformational for your business growth. And we'll be talking about it all next week. So you guys have a great day. Have a great weekend. The studio is closing in five, four, three, two, one. Have a great day and a great weekend, everybody.